Eight-year-old Michael is playing in the little stream beside his house. The water comes out from a spring in the ground and flows gently down a slope. He places a yellow ping-pong ball in the water and watches as it floats gently downstream. I wonder where the ping-pong ball will end up, says Michael. His dad, who is standing beside him, answers, maybe in the ocean. Michael looks up at his dad and asks, how is that possible? The water from this stream will flow into a bigger river, his dad answers. The river water will eventually flow into a lake or a sea. If it flows into a sea, it will finally join up with the ocean. And so, too, will the ping-pong ball as it gets carried by the water. Wow, exclaims Michael. I never knew that all these waters are connected. The water from this spring, this stream, the river, the lake, the sea, and the ocean are all examples of surface water, continues his dad. Surface water is water on the Earth's surface and is visible. However, the source of this spring water is from under the ground. When rain falls onto the ground, some of it will flow on the surface into streams and rivers and form surface water. Some will seep into the ground and fill up the spaces in between the soil particles. Over time, more and more water accumulates under the ground. This underground water, which is not visible, forms an aquifer. The top of this underground water is called a water table. Some of this underground water may flow out and form a spring like this, says his dad. Is this water drinkable, asks Michael. Well, that depends, answers his dad. If there's no contamination and not much dissolved salts, then it's fit for drinking. Can you see the little fish swimming in this stream? That shows that this water is safe. But to be on the safe side, it's always advisable to boil it first to kill any germs that may be in the water, cautions his dad.